Okay, um, quick update on springs and the EDC X9. Uh, just a couple of administrative points I wanted to bring up because, uh, let me grab this too. Uh, this, uh, this has been coming up in questions. So by the time you see this video, I'm not gonna publish this video right away. So by the time you see this video, uh, we will be crossing, we will have crossed 5,000 rounds on this gun. So definitely, well, the day I'm filming this, we definitely crossed it for 5,000 rounds. By the time you see it, it'll probably be closer to six. So five inch gun, EDC X9 now, if you follow the channel, you know who we are, you know what's going on with it. So, um, uh, interesting point, uh, people ask about, you know, wear and tear and, and that kind of stuff on a gun and, you know, and round counts and how it holds up. And I seem to remember back in the old days, the bad forum days, especially, you'd see these guys and they would make the argument that, you know, who drops a gun? You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a professional, I don't drop guns. And it's like, you know, okay. You know, yeah, yeah, it means you don't carry either because you never go out in the snow or you never trip, you know, on a on a threshold or slide downstairs or slip in the ice or, you know, what, you know, just sometimes people fall down. Things happen, you know. So, you know, you never, you may never drop a gun, but if you drop, your gun drops with you. So, um, I'm going to roll video in here at some point on this video. Um, oh. Oh, my God, the quarterback is toast. This... This gun has a lot of wear on it. Let me see if I can show this. So a lot of wear, so it's gonna be hard to see. So this big hunk of uh, silver right there, I am pretty certain, I am pretty certain that that happened uh, at the last drop I had with this gun. I was um, running up to a VTAC barricade, posting to, um, to work the barricade. And what happened was, which is gonna sound bizarre when I say this, running in a pit full of gravel I stepped on a rock, <laughs> but um, when I went to stop, my foot hit a big rock and that big rock ended up sliding and I went falling and I'll go ahead and roll that video in here and you can see me falling and uh, the gun hitting the ground. So the gun was hot. Um, you know, there's camera people there. Uh, the range was full of people and um, I distinctly remember falling. Number one, I have to, you should know how to fall. You should learn how to do that. Maybe take a martial arts class or some kind of self-defense class or, you know, JITS class or something, learn how to fall. Um, but my primary concern was one thing I like about, you know, 1911s and the, in the old days when we got away from like the striker guns is I distinctly remember committing that I had my thumb pressed up on that, on that thumb safety as I was sailing through the air and you have seen it here. And so, you know, it's, I, I, manual, that, it's an area where manual safety certainly doesn't hurt, especially if you have the wherewithal to operate it. So, um, so there, got that out of the way. Yeah, sometimes you, you drop guns or you drop yourself and, and things happen. So that gun's cooling off here a little bit. So um, <clears throat> at 5,000 rounds, we're still running the original springs in this gun. I have not changed the springs. So uh, reach out to Wilson Combat and uh, let's see here. So I ordered a couple, you know, got a couple springs from them. These are these are the same, these, these three. So we'll just go ahead and pull one. This is a 14 pound. Chrome silicone, silicon, regular, you know, for, uh, wire spring. This is a flat wire spring kit, uh, full size, 13 pound. They sell this as a 13 pound, or at least that's what they sent us. So it's 13 pounds and it's a flat wire. And also, I guess this became, I didn't really think about it. When you, if you're going to run a flat wire spring in your gun and obviously like the flat wire spring, if you get an EDC X9 gun and you run a flat wire spring, they're rated for 40,000 rounds, so you just like a Glock. But you do need to have a smaller plug, a GI plug, because the, or a, yeah, smaller plug, because the, inter, the internal dimensions of the recoil spring, the flat wire spring, are smaller. So your, mouse shit, the, uh, the smaller uh, dimensions you know, your, your standard plug's not gonna fit through that, so you gotta have a smaller plug. And so, Wilson kind of explained that, they send it over. Obviously, it looks like it's a kit. Um, I don't know if they're calling this part number 773, but if that's what you're looking to do, full a five inch gun with flat wire spring, I think maybe if you get on their, on their website and look up product number 773, it probably, I would imagine, gets you the whole kit. Uh, flat wire recoil spring kit. So that would be more than just a spring. So next question we get, let's see if I still have the other stuff here. You know what I do? I do have some. Is oil. 
Now, I'm gonna talk about this. I've hinted around at it in the past, and it's gonna sound like I'm shilling, but I'm not. Um, I'm not that wrapped around the axle with, with oil. Um, I believe in synthetic oil. Um, I, I, you know, guys will ask me, what do I use to lube a gun? What do I use, you know, maybe to clean a gun, what I'm doing? It, de it depends on, you know, whether I'm cleaning a gun, if you're taking a gun and, uh, you know, you're using it in a sonic, sonic tank and you stripped all of the lubrication out of it, maybe you should soak the gun, you know, re -lube. there's different, but for just regular old oil, like you're putting oil on a gun, I'm a big, I'm a big believer in, I'm a big believer in synthetic gun lubes because I've really seen that they've, they've worked over time. So for, oh shit, it's 2021, uh, I'd say since about, I don't know, maybe 2008? No, earlier than that. Maybe, I don't know, maybe two, maybe mid-2000s? When did Slip 2000 come out? So we started using Slip 2000. Um, I've been real, you know, real happy with it. It gets super slick. And um, a bunch of people I worked I worked with used it, and um, I've been using it, and I've used it really until this past year. Um, and I'll talk about why. Come back to the circle back to that in a second. So Wilson, when they sent over their guns, they have a bunch of different oils that they. Let's see what do they have here. They've got. Well, I don't see the. There's a whole bunch of different bottles back there. So there's a whole, you know, there's all kinds of stuff. So anyway, the, the, the oil they sent is called, they call it their light oil. And this is some kind of synthetic oil. You know, the, the, the big selling point to me with this oil, at least off the bat, is the container. Um, you know, I like the clamshell casing. Um, it's got a plug in the bottle. So it never fails. Like I'll have oil in the truck and half the bottle will bend up in the bottom of a bed of a truck or bottom of a range bag, which, you know, sucks rock. So take that plug out. It's got a nice applicator and, you know, it, it you know, it works real well. It's a thin oil and, you know, you kind of wonder, it's like, well, I don't know, is this going to work all year? Well, it's worked all year. Great for us. It worked, you know, we shoot out here, it's 10 degrees below zero. Today it is about 90 degrees and I've had very, very good luck with this oil. And the most amazing thing about this oil historically is um, I get to use all of it because it doesn't leak out of the damn bottle into the make a mess into the into the into the range bags or you know it just it, it just seems like you know I never can find a container that works and it just seems like Wilson's really thought about this like they you can tell it's a bunch of dudes that shoot and they keep a lot of stuff in their trucks or their range bags and there's a lot of admin and admin means mess and they put a lot of thought into this container so that got my attention however I like the Slip 2000. I still recommend Slip 2000. However, I have noticed possibly, and some of my former coworkers have mentioned this to me as well. And I don't, I, I, I don't, because they have different versions of Slip 2000. We we have Slip 2000. We have EWL. I don't know if it's the same or not. Or what I'm about to observe maybe doesn't apply to one or both of the uh, of the SKUs. We've observed that under heavy, heavy, heavy use, if you're getting guns extremely hot, it seems like Slip 2000 produces a lot of gum or waste in the gun. Like it really seems to dirty up the guns. And to the point where if you're a high round count shooter, you start realizing if you're using different synthetic lubes versus this kind of lube, you know, it's gotten to the point where I, even some of the people that I, I used to work with have told me that they're actually getting away from the Slip 2000 product and they're going back to the some of the Army CLP stuff because, you know, they feel like it, at the very least it doesn't gum up the guns. You just, you know, it, it's easier. They run longer, um, dirtier, if that makes any sense. So, um, so right now I'm still using this and we, I mean, I use it on handguns. I use it on ARs. Uh, I've used it on a lot of the reference. Basically any gun that's hit this range in the past 12 months, 14 months, how long we've had this bottle. And um, it, uh, and see how much I've used. Like it, it, it goes a long way, especially if you don't lose half of it. So, um, so I guess that's really about it. So addressing lubes, kind of where we're at with lubricants, kind of where we're at with, um, with uh, recoil springs. We're going to be changing recoil springs on the gun, uh, on the uh, EDC gun. I don't know if it, we're, I guess maybe we'll do some testing. We'll try out the flat wire spring 
see what the recoil impulse is like, if we like it, or whether we'll go back to one of these. Um, I don't recommend, I don't really know with nine millimeter recoil springs, what is considered a standard spring, paint, spring change schedule. Back in the old days, we used to change stuff every 3,000 rounds. But um, with nine millimeter, it could be different. We're up to 5,000 on this gun, and that's probably too long. Also, there is not a firing pin spring in this kit. And so whenever I would change change um, recoil springs, we always change firing pin springs. And the EDC X9 does use a Series 70 uh, <clears throat> uh, firing pin, so there's no firing pin block. And so for carry, you definitely, if you're running a Series 70 gun, doesn't matter who makes it, um, we recommend that you change your recoil spring and your firing pin spring in tandem. Do you need to change the fire pin spring? You know, every time you change your recoil spring? No. But if you do it, that means you'll never forget. And if you go drop in your gun, as in the example that you see here, if you drop yourself in this video, maybe that fire pin spring will, you know, do its job and save the day from being more than just embarrassing. So that kind of puts a bow on this entire video and kind of where we're at. So if you want to see any more stories or pictures or links of anything we discuss, please go to our website at john1911.com. That's J-O-H-N-1911.com. Remember, it's all about shooting guns and having fun, sometimes falling on your ass. Everybody, have a good day.